Hello again guys, welcome back to another Big Al Devrin video here at the House of Devrin. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put forwards a theory that I've just come up with my, by, my, by myself in the last few days really. I've been pondering over it for a long time. Um, and what you have in front of you is the triquetra, which is a symbol within paganism. Um, it's very common and there are many variations of it. Um, but obviously the significance of it is it does represent essentially the flow of fate and, and ultimate destiny, essentially, is what is represented in those circles and swirls. We've known this as pagans for a long, long time. Um, and um, you know, that it's not just a pretty circle with, <laughs> with swirls in it, so to speak. Um, but um, we've also known that obviously in, in pagan beliefs that the universe is born, it lives, and then it dies, and then it is reborn again. Um, we know this, uh, and I've discussed the reasons why we know this in previous videos, so please watch them because it's, you know, th th those, that, those videos took an hour long each to discuss each, <laughs> each aspect, so there's a good three, four hours worth of videos out there already discussing that, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But we know that this flow, essentially, of, of fate fulfilling actions uh, causes the flow of time and thus the definition um, and, and of, of life and the creation destruction cycle that that we experience here within the material realm, but also also within the spiritual realms also. Um, and we know that fate has fehu ultimately has a desire to fill. Um, uh, Potential possibilities that have been fragmented from an original source point, a source point that we would call oneness essentially within the universe, which is a whole amalgamation of completed events bound by wisdom, and wisdom simply knowledge uh, and uh, understanding. Okay, um, and we know that at the death of the universe, during Ragnarok, to the death of reality, of the spiritual material realms, at Ragnarok, there is a return, there is, you know, there is obviously the destruction of everything, and then a return to the state of oneness, a return to source that we had at the very beginning of the universe, and then time begins anew, life begins anew. Um, as fate begins to flow through the universe once more after it fragments uh, the, 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 the oneness or the source uh, that, we, that, that it has uh, just formed in an attempt to gain an extra amount of oneness. As I say, the source, the oneness within the beginning of the universe or the beginning of every rebirth cycle of the universe is an organic substance. It, it, what makes us, we all come from the source. And so if we are organic, then itself must be organic in, 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 in essence and all organic things need and require sustenance and you know and, and have desire themselves to, to, to go out and seek that sustenance in the case of the source as I say it's more of a process of fulfilling fate okay fulfilling destiny and understanding and processing the data that comes from the fulfillment of um, these 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 uh, possibilities and probabilities. Now, the triquetra that you've got ahead of you, as I say, please focus on that and start just really thinking about it and see what comes to you. Maybe pause the video and come back to the video in a few days' time. Pause on it and think on it and just try to let your your higher learning centers open up and let information flow from that icon into you and try to interpret what you're seeing because this is the key to the theory that I've created. This was what inspired me to come up with this theory in many ways because my mentor um, actually said to me, goes that I've basically reached the same sort of level of him regards the understanding of the flow of fate, time, life, destruction and, and the rebirth of the universe and all that. But he says we're, we're both at that knot, you know, that point where we can't get, get out of this knot now on basically why does fate or you know the the, the fulfilled uh, probabilities um, uh, 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 return to source why does everything return to source that is something we've never been able to answer at least that I'm aware of um, and my theory here I'm hoping answers it I'm hoping that we I can answer for you the reason why 
everything returns to source and how that then leads onto the birth of a new reality, a new universe, if you wish. Um, um, and essentially, there's a, a simply almost recycling of what was once uh, before. Okay, and it answers why we, we already know, as I say, why the source fragments. We know why oneness fragments. It's because of fate here, essentially, the desire of fate that fragments it, and it needs to fragment it to create relativity, um, so that uh, when when you know we go from a singularity to an infinite number of probabilities to gain relativity um, between the events, and so that we can acquire as much oneness as possible by completing events. Okay, but as I say, why or how fate or, or the, the products of fate return to source, this is unknown. Okay, but I do have a theory, as I say, from, from to, to, to put forwards here today in this video. Now, if you have paused the video or if you've just come back from, you know, as I say, a little bit of time thinking about the Troy Quetcher, obviously you might have some ideas of your own. Okay, but it was as I say, it was my, what my mentor said um, on the on, that we are in this knot, and it got me to think of the Trochretcher because it is a Celtic knot essentially. It's a knot pattern um, that uh, the Celts would, uh, uh, well, all pagans would have used as part of their artwork. And for some reason, it just got me focusing on that. And when I see that Trochretcher, I see obviously yes, the flow of fate, the flow of destiny, but I also see in the centre an eternal source okay so everything is destroyed in Ragnarok but no it isn't because there is some eternal aspects to the universe that must always exist fate must always exist it may not be exerting any influence but it always exists um, Musselheim and Niflheim they must always uh, this this is my theory they must be eternal aspects of the universe also because at the beginning of the universe in the creation story of all pagan western uh, european uh, pagan belief systems we we see that at the very beginning there are only two realms that exist Muselheim and Niflheim and they are split apart by a great gulf called Ganungunap which is nothingness where not even sound the silence uh, or darkness exists because darkness is simply the absence of light and so it is something it's the absence of something so that defines it as something same silence it's the absence of sound it's defined as something so not even silence and darkness exist in Ganungalap it is literally a void of nothingness but during the creation period obviously the two realms do begin to expand there's absolutely no reason or explanation sorry within the creation story or the cosmos cosmos story or, or for pagans as to why these realms begin to expand but they do and they expand eventually into one another and where ice meets fire you get uh, you get you know steam or, or and where um, uh, fire meets ice you get water essentially and so you see an interaction between the two realms and as a result of this, the creation of life um, and then the awakening of life later on through Ordhumbla, the force of Ordhumbla, which is essentially the force of, of essentially consciousness that, that, that is in all um, conscious beings, the gods and men alike, and all the other sort of spirits uh, that exist within the spiritual realm that are self aware. However, what I'm trying to say is at the very beginning of the universe, Muselheim and Niflheim are already there so they must not have been fully destroyed during Ragnarok but Ragnarok destroys everything that's what it's there for it's there to destroy everything including itself the destructive forces become self-destructive at the end of the universe and this is where we're going to go, go. So what I want to show to you is just, first of all, before we go into detail, the normal flow of fate uh, through the cycles of fate, uh, time and life. Just so that we're, we're all 100% certain where we are. So I'm just going to recap on a little bit of what I've said just now. So guys, I first of all want to apologise. I'm not the very best at paint. 
<laughs> or anything like that. But what I have, I've done my very best at drawing essentially the cycles that paganism believes in. Paganism believes that there is a flow of fate, which is represented by the arrow, so it's showing the flow of direction, essentially. There is a flow of uh, fate from source, which is the source of which is oneness essentially that is accumulated during previous realities and flight flows down these cycles and you can almost imagine these circles turning like cogs and wheels so to speak and turning one another as fate begins to to rotate towards the right because of this you know the, the action of fate who uh, forcing it forwards time then also begins to flow and as time flows because of its interaction with fate, uh, time this then gives definition to the creation destruction cycle or life because without time, without movement or anything like that, you, you know, you can't you can't interact with the world. Life cannot exist without time. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and so really this is as I say just an illustration um, showing you what uh, if you're a pagan, you'll be already very familiar with, and if you're not pagan, what we sort of see as the flow of everything. And ultimately, the end point is when basically everything has expanded so much, there's been so much creation essentially. But creation ultimately leads to create. The universe creates through creation, or creates through itself, and those cr creations create even more. Okay, so when we're created, for example, I when we're born, we go out and we fulfill more probabilities, possibilities by ourselves. Um, fate is directing us, yes, but fate is also all around us fulfilling possibilities and probabilities at the same time. But we have been created by fate and go off and create even more sort of fulfillments of fate. We are sort of an exponential growth of fulfillment ultimately um, whenever we achieve or do anything we are contributing towards the fulfillment of 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 source once more of oneness okay um, and so that's what i mean where creation can lead to more creation when we are born we we create just by simply living but we also destroy of course you know we must eat so when we kill an animal to eat for example um the life force of that animal is used to maintain ourselves so there is a balance between creation and destruction to some degree but at the very beginning of the universe creation is very much very much sort of imbalanced in favor of creation it's very little destruction but as more and more creation begins to sort of blossom essentially as there is more life within the universe as there is more um, fulfilled actions everything that is created even inanimate objects like stars and even things that we can't see like atoms and things like this must one day cease to exist they all turn to dust this is basic science now actually we're talking physics here proven theories proven facts we all know that you know look at ourselves we're biological entities we will with 100% certain at one point die, rot, and eventually disappear. But the same happens for the stars. When they blow up, they turn to dust, so on and so forth. Everything must come to an end. And so as you have more life, you have a greater potential for destruction. Because life is just sort of a potential dis destroyed thing something that can be potentially destroyed so if there's more life to be destroyed the potential for destruction increases until the point where there's so much and we call this entropy and there's so much entropy by a certain point within the universe that destruction literally kind of cascades it just overspills and overwhelms creation and this is ragnarok destruction becomes such a, such a massive force that everything literally will disappear will be destroyed will die and will cease to exist any longer time will stop flowing and fate fate has fulfilled all its actions this is ultimately why why we get ragnarok because fate as the universe you know creates and creates and creates it gets bigger Okay, and ultimately there's only a limited amount of fate. That fate is recycled, so there's essentially unlimited amount of fate, but there's a limited amount of fate regards where it can go. And as it spreads throughout the universe or throughout reality, through the nine realms, through the tree of Yggdrasil, from the well of Erd, um, fate can only be 
in so many places at so, 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 so at any particular point in time and if the universe is so vast it can literally get to the point where fate is so dispersed it no longer has enough strength the power of a, of a ruse powering it is so diffused that it can no longer achieve any more possibilities and probabilities and this is essentially the sort of point which then allows then destruction and entropy to overtake creation because there's not enough fate to fuel creation but destruction is is fueled by the fact that there is creation there and this is why we have Ragnarok however as I say when we look at the story of Ragnarok it kind of just ends with the destruction of the nine of, of, of the realm so to speak it really discusses mostly Asgard and uh, Midgard but it doesn't really discuss what happens to Muspelheim and Niflheim the two realms that were originally in the universe at the very beginning now these must have in my personal opinion if they're there at the beginning must have actually be eternal elements within the universe because they must have been there in the previous reality to our own the reality previous to that and previous to that and the realities that all follow us when our reality gets destroyed Muselheim and Niflheim will be still present in our beginning of our creational story at the beginning of every recreation there is still Niflheim and Muselheim. This is something we know as a constant, an eternity almost. However, they are separated, as I said by earlier, by a vast space called Ganunganap. So how did they separate? Well, ultimately, this is my idea, that destruction at the end, once it's destroyed all creation, destroys itself. It feeds off itself. Destruction must destroy itself. Muselheim and Niflheim, which really are the rounds of destruction in many respects, um, begin to retreat as such as destruction feeds off the rounds of Muselheim and Niflheim, causing them to retreat. Destruction thus then fuels creation because as Muselheim and Niflheim retreat, it actually then expands into another universe another reality okay um, and I will display this now with a, an illustration that I've drawn and we'll discuss it further okay so as we've established in Ragnarok everything is destroyed but destruction itself must also be destroyed for Ragnarok really to be completed Ragnarok is the destruction of creation but it is also the destruction of destruction also it's the destruction of literally everything and so we, what we see here is on the right hand side of the screen that's our original cycle that I just displayed for you before uh, where normally uh, uh, the arrow would be pointing to the right and uh, uh, fate would be flowing from source which is in the center uh, towards the right towards life but at this point life the creation of cycle of life is literally just give it the capital D it's pure destruction at this point and it, this destruction is feeding off itself and as a result because destruction normally feeds off creation the, that, that's not a problem and it, and it feeds off creation because it's being fueled by fate and time Okay, as you imagine when the cogs and wheels are turning, that it's flowing in a certain direction. But now it's doing the opposite of what it normally does. It is destroying itself. The forces of destruction are destroying themselves. And as a result, bringing the balance between creation and destruction back towards the norm. I.e., actually in this case, actually bringing it down to zero so that there is a zero life ultimately in this case in this particular reality now of course you cannot have a zero life as such there must always be uh, some creation and destruction but at this point there is just destruction filling that circle okay and so as destruction begins to destroy itself it actually begins to force the circles to move in the opposite direction and this is the theory that I'm put, that I'm proposing to you guys that's why the arrow is now pointing to the left so if we move from the, the, the circle on the furthest side on the right hand side okay the life if we imagine that turning in in towards the left now instead of towards the right because destruction is feeding off itself 
and destruction is leading to creation ultimately remember that it then causes time to ultimately not flow in the opposite direction because remember if you've seen one of my other videos we had a separation a fragmentation of oneness at the very beginning of the universe oneness being source okay and when we fragment source in through a prism of dispersion essentially what we are doing we are creating ultimate relativity we have an infinite number of possibilities and probabilities and so as a result we go from a singularity to an in an, an infinite set of probabilities and possibilities and that what that means is is that regardless of which direction you go you can go if you we we, we seem to basically see time as linear that it goes in one direction but actually and this is again proved by very advanced physics actually so you know i'm not going to get too heavy into it because i don't have the, quite the understanding of it but but i, I have enough to, to describe it to you guys that basically whatever direction you go in it doesn't matter you can go in this direction in the universe and you could be ultimately going to the past or you could be going to the future it doesn't matter uh it, it really doesn't matter it's all about relativity essentially essentially and so even though time is flowing backwards we're not going back in the past we're not reversing what has existed in the previous universe time is just simply flowing back to source that's all that's happening time expanded away from source but now it's returning back to source okay and that does not necessarily as i say mean that we're going back to the past it doesn't doesn't do that there is no sort of and even if it did even if time was going back to the past its influence is directly now affecting fate because the flow is from right to left it's not actually touching it's not interacting with life life is fueling time or, or destruction in this case is the fueling time okay and time isn't defining life life is defining time now okay so it doesn't matter even if even if we were traveling uh, or making time go backwards it doesn't matter it's not going to affect life it's not going to reverse what's happened time however then causes the flow of fate to move in the opposite direction that it once did fate expanded away from source in an infinite number of directions to fulfill an infinite number of probabilities and as fate flows now back towards source because time is moving in the opposite direction that it, that, it, that it once expanded in and now fate is moving in the opposite direction that it once expanded to fate then accumulates at the source point it accumulates at the source point okay and this is all because in in the life cycle Musselheim and Niflheim are beginning to retreat they are essentially being destroyed but where are they going they are start simply beginning to expand themselves towards the source point and when they hit the source point this is when the power of Fehu causes it is so so high the potential of fulfillment is so high it causes the splitting of source of oneness back into an infinite number of probabilities but this time now towards the left okay and then we get the same creational cycle that we had before it's just essentially going in the opposite direction but it doesn't matter which direction it's going in it's still doing the same thing now um, it's just the order of the circles that matters and once again as I said because Musselheim and Nifheim are simply retreated um, as they're being destroyed they then begin once they hit the source point to begin to expand into our creational cycle and that's why at the beginning Musselheim and Niflheim are always there but they are separated by this huge gulf because ultimately they've retreated as far back as what they're, to back to their beginning point which is the source point I believe that Musselheim and Niflheim the very origins of these realms are actually at the source point where oneness exists within the universe um, once it is completed okay and as I say once then they start to expand towards one another um, but in opposite directions essentially they then have to cover the entire universe and meet once again and when they meet this is when we see obviously the introduction of life okay um, this is my idea anyway and what we'll see now imagine these six circles the three circles on the right which we're very familiar with the three circles on the left which is simply a mirror image of what we're very familiar with 
okay if we were to merge them together you know kind of twist them around and stuff like this because pagans we don't like lines we don't like linear stuff that's why we have circles that's why we have cycles okay because we believe everything kind of goes in a cycle well what do we get when we bend those circles together I'll pause for a moment um, and I will show you of course what it becomes that's right it becomes the triquetra the triquetra an image that all pagans are familiar with and know to be representing fate and destiny is the answer it was the key to the answer the question uh, or the key to getting the answer to the question we've all had and not been able to come to an answer for and that is why does float fate go back to source and why do we get a rebirth for the universe after destruction's finished it's because of how I've just explained it because destruction becomes the fuel for uh, the creation of another universe ultimately that's a, the simplified way of putting it as the, 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 the destructive elements of the, the previous reality um, begins to feed off itself you get a return as I say of fate back to source um, and you get the return of the, the realms back to source and then you get this an outward expansion but in the opposite direction into a new reality um, once more and this we have a rebirth of the universe and the triquetra symbolizes this perfectly we have this circle in the middle which is an eternity okay an eternal uh, cycling or recycling of realities um, the eternity, eternal presence of Musselheim and Niflheim, perhaps the, also the eternal presence of the Norns, because in theory they kind of exist outside of Yggdrasil and the, and the Nine Realms. They 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 live within the basin of Ur, uh, Urd. But you know this is another discussion for another time. It doesn't really matter what elements are eternal, uh, other than the fact that Musselheim and Niflheim are, and of course life and the cycles of the universe are eternal but as we see with the this, this spiraling sort of uh, uh, sort of free free element free free spirals within within the circle what that represents is simply just the recycling of it all the site recycling and when I say recycling I mean like literally cycles going into new cycles um, uh, within that eternal aspect as a sort of anchor point that circle is acting as an anchor point for those spirals so they're locked in place and they just feed one another in an eternal spiral if you were to put your finger on those the the, the, the triquetra in the center and you would just follow those spirals around in a you know the sort of cyclical motion that they go in you could do that for all eternity and not stop and that's the whole point the universe is being born and reborn uh, and, and dies and reborn. Re, uh, it gets born, it lives, it dies, and it, it gets reborn um, again and again and again for all eternity, just as this triquetra represents. Okay, as well as obviously representing, you know, the, the smaller spirals. You could say are, you know, the strands of fate. Whereas the circle, of course, is destiny itself. Okay, the unavoidable, you know, eternal presence of destiny. Okay. It's a theory, guys, that I've put forward. It's a theory that personally answers my questions. I feel that the knot, as my mentor described it as, is now unraveled. But it has unraveled and presented itself as the triquetra. The triquetra, literally, I don't know if that was him <laughs> hinting towards it or whether... No, I, 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 he said he was stuck in the same knot as myself. But now we have the knot. We've, I've found the knot that answers how to unravel the, 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 the knot that was in our he own heads. We have unlocked now some of the knowledge perhaps that our ancestors once had and the understanding of how the rebirth cycle occurred. And it was all through focusing on this symbol that is in front of you. Focus on it yourself, guys. Don't take my word for it. This is theory. It is my personal interpretation. Of paganism and of, of the teaching of, of, of paganism essentially uh, and the belief systems within it um, it's certainly a very valid uh, belief system uh, uh, sorry theory that I've come up with it makes sense it may be wrong it may be right 
it makes sense to me so until I hear something better this is what I'm going with but of course guys do not take it as stone for yourself question it ask yourself does this make sense to you or if you need any clarifications like you do understand you, you, you believe what you, you, you think hey, this is a good idea but you you know maybe I've you know sort of misrepresented it linguistically speaking I've, I've not 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 really made it easy to understand I've tried to use images to explain it because I know sometimes I get a bit wordy but if, if you need any clarifications please use the comments I always try to answer as, but as soon as I can whenever I see the comments I always answer them um, and so you know we can have a discussion on whether this is actually true or not and if it is I, I was so excited literally so excited when I came up with this theory I was doing I, I cut you know when I come up with all my theories on paganism and stuff like you know do the strands of fate contain emotions within them stuff like this all these ideas it's when I'm in the bath when I'm relaxed that's my kind of area <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange thing I know but that's where I get a lot of my ideas or when the ideas come to me as I say I believe these ideas are not mine they come from my higher learning centers which are linked of course to the gods and because I am using trances and meditation and things like this to 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 essentially uh, connect put more connections between me myself and my gods and to try and uh, raise my actual self-consciousness towards my higher consciousness so there's a greater connection between them I think that's why I'm getting the answers at a faster rate but it always seems to be in the bath when, when I get these 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 answers come to me <laughs> it's a strange thing um, but there we go um, but uh, regardless maybe it's because water is a true medium I don't know if water exists in all the realms pretty much doesn't it apart from Musselheim and even there I don't know I, I think I'm getting too much into 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 random ideas now I think maybe I have to think about but I hope you enjoyed the theory guys I hope it made sense if it didn't query me if you think it's not good then just put that down that's not a problem we're all allowed our different interpretations and if you can convince me that I'm wrong that's not a problem but I was so excited as I say when I came out I, I, I ran out the bath soaking wet got my notebook wrote all this down drew all the circles and everything that was coming to my head drew out a basic triquetra which I'm not very artistically inclined looks nothing like what's on the screen <laughs> it looks it looks like three sad balloons that have been tied together but nonetheless I got my theory down on paper I was so excited and I'm so excited to share this video with you guys so thank you for watching and I hope I hope I've perhaps put a bit more of us our old knowledge back for, for paganism I hope we can understand the world in the way that we once did thank you bye